In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the differences between two incredible breeds, the Siberian Husky and the Akita. Welcome back to the Fenrir Siberian Husky Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Siberian Husky and then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise the perfect Huskies. So if you're a lifelong Husky lover or you're thinking about getting one, this is the perfect channel for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future upload here. And today we're going to take a look into what really separates the Siberian Husky and the Akita. Not only will we compare the origins of these fascinating breeds, but also we will dive into their looks, their intelligence and trainability, their temperament, as well as their exercise needs, and also their grooming requirements. So let's get started with comparing the origins of these fascinating breeds. And we begin with the history of the Siberian Husky. As its name would suggest, the breed originates from Siberia and was introduced to Alaska for the first time in the year of 1908 for sled dog races. The Siberian Husky that we have today has been developed from the native sled dog that had been bred in Northeast Siberia for thousands of years. No doubt these ancient people called the Chukchi were highly motivated to perfecting the sled dog by all means possible. Their survival depended upon them because without the sleds, there was no way for hunters to take their food back to their families. In the 1930s, 12 of these Siberian sled dogs were introduced into the United States. Soon these stunning dogs became popular in other countries as well. It is said that every single Siberian Husky in the world has ancestry going back to the handful of dogs who were imported into the US in those early parts of the 20th century. Because of their heritage, Siberian Huskies count as some of the oldest breeds on the planet. However, the Akita might be even more ancient. Researchers suggest that they have been around even prior to the recorded history. In ancient Japan, the privilege of owning Akitas was exclusively reserved to the ruling class, the Shogun. Not unlike the Husky, the Akita was bred for agility and endurance. However, their original role was not to pull sleds, but to assist hunting parties in northern Japan. The Akita's role was track and flush out large game such as elk, bear, and wild boar. And then they would keep it in check until the hunters would arrive to kill it. This task required on, not only courage, but also considerable strength and endurance from the dogs, simply because of the rough mountainous and often snow-covered terrain they had to work in. After World War II, US soldiers brought several Akitas back with them, but it was not until the 1980s that the breed spread to many other countries in the world. In outer appearance, the Siberian Husky and the Akita do have a lot of similarities. This is especially the case for slightly smaller and lighter Japanese Akita, also known as the Akita Inu. Both the Husky and the Akita have beautiful, thick and plush coats that come in a variety of colors, such as red, sesame, fawn, and white. Other characteristics these two breeds share are their small, erect, triangular shaped ears. Now, let's take a look at how to visually tell the Husky and the Akita apart. The thing that sticks out to me is the eyes. Huskies quite often come with stunning ice blue eyes, or one blue and one brown eye. As well, they're smaller and lighter than the Akitas. The males stand between 53 and 60 centimeters and the females slightly smaller. Their weight can range from 20 to 27 kilos, again, with the females being a bit smaller. Japanese Akitas are considerably taller and heavier than the Siberian Husky. Adult males stand to 70 centimeters tall and weigh between 50 kg. American Akitas are usually taller and considerably heavier than their Japanese cousins. 
Hey guys, I wanted to very quickly interrupt this video and let you know about our mini Odin collar. By now you might be aware of our industry leading and world famous Fenrir Odin collar, but not all dog breeds and especially puppies don't quite need something so substantial. So we shrunk it down a little bit and made the world's best collar for puppies of large breeds or smaller to medium breeds that don't need something quite so big, but still want the same level of reliability and excellence when it comes to their dog collar. So if you are interested in learning more about our mini Odin collar, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to today's video. Now let's find out how intelligent and trainable these beautiful breeds are. Due to their history, Siberian Huskies are very used to thinking for themselves. Of course, on the flip side, this presents us with a dog who does not feel the need to please their owner. This is not to say that the Huskies cannot be trained to a decent level of obedience, because with patience and persistence, this can definitely be done. However, we should not expect them to perform to the similar levels as for example, the German Shepherd. In terms of independence, the Akita is very similar. Their role as fearless hunting companions in ancient Japan, who had to tackle large and dangerous game, laid the foundation for them to be very independent. Like the Husky, they had to work independently as well because the hunters relied on the Akitas to find the desirable game, flush it out, and then to keep it in check until the humans had arrived. As we can see, each breed has a historical reason for why it's so independent. And whilst this apparent stubbornness does not make training those amazing dogs any easier, it does make any success we do have with them very rewarding. And this brings us to the main differences in temperament. Again, due to their history, Siberian Huskies are excellent team players. That means they get along very well with other dogs. Usually they're quite sweet tempered towards humans, which does not make them the best guard dog. Back in the day in Siberia, the survival of men and dogs strongly depend on the sled dogs working together perfectly. However, in the absence of strong, consistent leadership, Siberian Huskies can develop gr aggressive behavior, just like the Akita. Another feature both breeds share. And on top of that, they both share an extremely intense prey drive. Huskies tend to hunt just about everything, even birds, and can cover enormous distances whilst doing so, which obviously puts the dogs at great danger and again, emphasizes the need for strong leadership. And whilst the Keaters are also prone to going off on unauthorized hunting expeditions when off leash, they are prone to react aggressively towards other dogs. Akitas need lots of socialization throughout their lives. With the right socialization and training, both breeds can become devoted family dogs and do well with children. However, it is best not to choose either breeds if you have very small children in your house. It is safe to say that both breeds need lots and lots of physical exercise in order to become and to stay balanced, well-behaved and well-rounded canine companions. This is especially important if you keep them in the house most of the time. Both breeds can get destructive when understimulated. Bored Huskies can not only do a similar amount of damage, but with added vocal background of loud howling. Due to their nature as sled dogs, bred to run hours upon hours without tiring, Huskies need more exercise than Akitas. So much so that normal walks will not satisfy them. Unless you actually work them as sled dogs, you could teach them to simply run alongside a bicycle. Akitas, on the other hand, do not need to run as much as Huskies, but they definitely require regular walks, plenty of playtime with their owners, as well as at least one good intense run off the leash per day. When provided with sufficient mental physical stimulation, both the Siberian Husky and the Akita are usually quite happy to relax inside the house for hours at a time. Now, when it comes to grooming, both breeds are very similar as they both come with thick plush and double coats. To keep these coats nice and shiny at all times and to minimize shedding, regular brushing is recommended. 
at least two or three times a week. A pin brush, paddle brush, as well as a comb with wide set teeth are the best tools to use for the rich coat of these glorious dogs. Outside of shedding season, in spring and autumn, both Huskies and Akitas hardly shed. The Akita is especially clean breed. They actually groom themselves by licking their fur, just like cats. And this brings us to the end of our discussion on both these two intriguing and beautiful breeds. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved in the comments down below. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We have two dedicated Siberian Husky videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Siberian Husky Show.